All right, in this video, this is part seven to creating a custom calendar from scratch. And in this particular part of the series, I wanna talk about finding the number of days in a month on our calendar. Not necessarily the number of days in the current month that it is right now, but whatever month we are on in our calendar, because once we get this code finalized, we can move on to this. And this will be part eight. This is where we get the other rows to work on our calendar regardless of what month or what year we are on in our calendar. So this is gonna be calendar from scratch part seven and let's go ahead and go inside of that component. You can find this from my free components folder and over in globals, let's add a text global and let's call it number days in month, N-D-I-M, the number of days in the month. This needs to be a text global. And for that text global, I'm just going to paste that code that you saw at the beginning of the video. But what in the world is this? Well, let's talk about the DF code, and in this case, the letter O. All right, so DFO, if I just close that up, it's going to return a 30. Now, what DFO does is it returns the number of days in a month, and in this case, since I don't have any other parameters after this, it's just gonna return the number of days in the current month that it is, and right now it's November, and November has 30 days. If I put a comma and I put 12, now this is determining the 12th month, even if I put an M here, it's not gonna change anything. And let's say for the year 2018. All right, now notice it's still returning a 31, and there's always gonna be 31 days in December, right? But let's change this month here to a two. So February of 2018, 2M 2018Y, February of 2018, we have 28 days. How about the year 2019? 28 days. How about the year 2020? Ah, look at that. The year 2020, the second month, we have 29 days in that month. So this is going to be changing dynamically depending on what month we are currently looking at on our calendar in the custom app. So just like in earlier videos where I link globals to this, what we want to do is GV month plus M. Therefore, whatever month we're looking at on our calendar, GV month, it's gonna return that month and whatever year we're on in our calendar, it's gonna return that year. So by us linking the globals here, this will change dynamically. And to show you that even further, I'm just going to delete this stuff that I've typed in, leaving that code alone. Let's check on that. And I'm just gonna come back to the items and I'm gonna to go to everything and I'm gonna add a text item just for demonstration purposes. So we have this text item here with the time. I'm gonna bump that size on up. And for this text, I'm going to return that global. GV, number days and month. So we have 30, but watch this number change. When I go to December, now we have 31. January, 31. February of 2019, we have 28 days. And now I'm going to fast forward to February of 2020, but you will notice all of these numbers are changing. But what I wanna show you here is this. When we go to February of 2020, we will see the 29 days there for the leap year. So this code does change dynamically depending on what month or in what year we are on. And now that we have the number of days in the month out of the way, I want to give you a little homework assignment, if you will. If you go over to all of my shared stuff and you look at the custom calendar folder, this folder right here, if you open up this Word document right here, other rows, that is this long code that we have here. If you've watched all of the parts up until this point, especially row one, where I've discussed SI module index, we've talked about Sun First, FDOM. The only new piece to this code here is going to be SI module index comma two. Sure, there's a lot of math going on here, but SI module index two, we're going to start adding more rows in part eight, and those rows that we'll put inside of a stack group, feel free to open up the fully complete CraftCal V5 to see what I'm talking about. But those rows, all of these rows are in a stack group. So we're actually going to use the index of those rows when we start doing the math to determine the rest of the days in the month. And that's what we'll look at in part eight. And there you have it, the number of days in a month, depending on what month we are on in our custom calendar from scratch. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.